Hola, and welcome to another episode of One Line at a Time. If you missed any of the previous episodes, you can find a list of them all at SpanishDude.com slash lines. That link is also below this video or in the first comment. Okay, this is Eleanor. She recently died and has gone to The Good Place. This is Michael. He's in charge of The Good Place and is telling Eleanor all about it, about her new life. Or afterlife, I should say. First, he shares that in The Good Place, everybody has a soulmate. We'll meet Eleanor's soon enough. Then he tells tells Eleanor that everybody gets a house that perfectly matches their true essence. Which is why Eleanor got such a small house while her neighbors got much bigger houses, Eleanor speculated in a somewhat sarcastic or skeptical tone. After entering her house, Michael really poured it on, showing Eleanor all the different ways her house perfectly matches her essence. It was done in the Icelandic primitive style just as you like it, he told her. And of course, you love clowns, he added as he pointed to a wall full of clown pictures. Eleanor replied, again, Again, with that same sarcastic or skeptical tone, I do love clowns. And in Spanish, the subtitlers translated that as Me encantan los payasos. When I first saw this line, I thought, no, this one's too easy. But as usually happens, once I looked a little closer, I realized there's no shortage of interesting stuff to explain here. So let's get to it. First, Eleanor said, I do love clowns. But in Spanish, they translated do as nothing. Me encantan los payasos just means I love clowns. This is possible because the word do doesn't really affect the meaning of what Eleanor said. I won't say the word do adds nothing here, but it doesn't change the main message. I love clowns, I do love clowns. Both of these sentences basically mean the same thing. This example of them translating one of our English words as nothing is a little different than what we've seen in previous episodes of One Line at a Time. In this context, do is being used as an auxiliary verb, though many people refer to it as a helper verb, including me. And that makes sense, the definition of auxiliary is offering or providing help and or functioning in a subsidiary capacity. In this example, the verb do is helping the verb love. Do is a helper verb, love is the main verb. The helper verb do is basically a subsidiary of the main verb love. That's why in my world, when we're zoomed out, we count the phrase do love as the verb. That's one verb. Both verbs are working together in the sentence to represent one action in reality. It seems we use do or does as a helper verb like this when we're affirming what was previously said. There might be other contexts in which we use do or does as helper verbs, but that's what appears to be going on here. Eleanor used the word do to affirm what Michael said previously, that she loves clowns. I do love clowns. Well, when we use do or does or any of its other forms as a helper verb, in Spanish they often translate it as nothing. They don't have to do that, they could go a number of different routes. Like C, si, men cantan los payasos. Yes, I love clowns. But more often than not, when do or does is a helper verb, they translate it as nothing. Now let's focus on the me encantan part. In Spanish, there's me gusta and me gustan for I like. Then there's me encanta and me encantan for I love. Just I like clowns would be me gustan los payasos. But I love clowns would be me encantan los payasos. Then in Spanish, they can also express love with the verb amar. I love would be yo amo or just amo. So I like is me gusta or me gustan, then I love is me encanta or me encantan or yo amo or just amo. In English, we use the word love for a lot of things. We love stuff like clowns and pizza, but we also love our parents. In Spanish, they don't do that. In Spanish, they differentiate between the different kinds of love. Go figure. When talking about our love for stuff like clowns and pizza, I love is better said with me encanta or me encantan. And when we're talking about our love for our parents, I love is better said with yo amo or just amo. This is all the very general, simplified version of things. In reality, it gets way more complicated. But I love clowns would be me encantan los payasos and I love my parents would be amo a mis padres. The a after amo is the personal a. Check out my video about the personal a if you don't know what that is. Link is below or in the first comment. That's the vocab. That's why they used me Cantan for I love. Now let's talk about the grammar. I love my parents. Amo a mis padres. Easy. Normal. Aside from the personal a and the missing subject pronoun, the English and Spanish match pretty much word for word. But then, I love clowns. Me encantan los payasos. Why is this sentence structured completely differently than the previous one, even though it's basically the same in English? Why is it me, not yo? What's going on here? Well, me encantan los payasos doesn't really mean I love clowns. Me encantan 
los payasos is just what they say in Spanish when we say I love clowns in English. More literally, me encantan los payasos means clowns enchant me, and cantar means to enchant, like to charm or to put under a spell. So, me encantan los payasos really means clowns enchant me, and that means the words in this Spanish translation are out of order. The subject here is clowns, that's who did the enchanting or charming, but payasos, the most common way to say clowns in Spanish, is at the end of the sentence. The subject is supposed to be at the beginning of the sentence. This sentence is out of order. Whenever the subject isn't at the beginning of the sentence, our minds get confused. So let's rewrite this sentence with the subject at the beginning. Me encantan los payasos becomes los payasos me encantan. These two sentences contain the same words and mean exactly the same thing. But in the second example, the subject is at the beginning and the words are in order. And as an added bonus, the order of the words in Spanish better match the order of the words in our more literal English translation of the Spanish translation. Los payasos me encantan. Clowns enchant me. That's why I love my parents is amo a mis padres, but I love clowns is me encantan los payasos. Me encantan los payasos is really los payasos me encantan and really means clowns enchant me. In the first Spanish example, the subject is yo, even though it's been omitted. In the second Spanish example, the subject is los payasos, but in English, the subject is I both times. So you've gathered by now, I assume, the most common word for clown in Spanish is el payaso or la payasa. But that's not what I learned originally. I first learned that clown is el bobo or la boba, I guess. I learned that from my Spanish friend Carlos. He used to always call me un bobo. When he first called me that, of course I asked him what it meant. He thought about it for a second and finally said, a clown. He was calling me a clown. I was cool with that. He said it with such affection and that cute little accent. And it made perfect sense to me that el bobo would mean clown because because Bozo the Clown, the TV show on WGN out of Chicago? However, I have come to learn something. El Bobo can mean clown, but it means clown more like idiot or fool, the more common translations of El Bobo. It's not commonly used for the person who dresses up and makes balloon animals, I don't think. Though I guess there is some overlap. Bottom line, Carlos was really calling me an idiot or a fool. I'm still cool with it though, you should have heard what I called him. Okay, last thing. Why did the subtitlers say Los Payasos, the clowns, when Eleanor just said clowns. For the sake of conversation, let's call just clowns a general noun when we're talking about clowns in general, and we'll call the clowns a specific noun when we're talking about a specific group of clowns. I still don't love that terminology, but until I have something better, we're just gonna go with it. Now, in reality, as weird as this sounds, there's always a way to look at a general noun as a specific noun. There are two ways to look at every general noun. For example, if I express to you that I don't like days that are hot, you could reply, I love hot days. But in that same context, you could also say, I love the hot days. When said in the same context, these two sentences mean exactly the same thing. We can say it either way, with the or without. In the first example, we treat hot days as a general noun, just hot days in general. But in the second example, we treat hot days as a specific noun, the hot days out of all the days or out of all the different types of days. If you love ice cream on top of a brownie, you could say, I love Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie. Or you could say, I love the Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie. Again, when said in the same context, we can say it either way. It means the same thing no matter what. In the first example, we treat Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie as a general noun. But in the second example, we treat Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie as a specific noun. Like we're talking about the Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie out of all the Sundays in the world or out of all the different types of Sundays. Well, it's the same with clowns. I love clowns. When we say that, we're talking about clowns in general. But even when we're talking about clowns in general, we're still talking talking about a specific group of people. I love clowns means I love the people known as clowns, or I love the people employed as clowns, or I love the clowns of the world. Out of all the people in the world, or all the types of people in the world, I love the clowns. The difference between clowns, hot days, and Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie is, for whatever reason, we don't typically say the clowns when talking about clowns in general, like we do sometimes with hot days and Sundays with ice cream on top of a brownie. Again, there's always a way to look at every general noun as a specific noun, which means whether we treat a noun as a general noun or a specific noun in either language is sometimes arbitrary. When talking about a general noun, it's just as logical to mention the as it is to not mention the. So it should come as no surprise that often when we treat a noun as a general noun in English, they treat it as a specific noun in Spanish. That's what's going on here. That's the logical reason why the subtitlers translated just clowns as los payasos. We treat 
treat clowns as a general noun in this context, and for whatever reason, they treat payasos as a specific noun in this context. But none of that helps us very much when we're speaking Spanish. That only helps us not drive ourselves crazy asking why. Since sometimes it's arbitrary, knowing why doesn't help us decide when to say el, la, los, or las, and when not to when speaking Spanish. That's the harder part, learning then remembering when we can say the in Spanish, when we can't say the in Spanish, and when we have a choice. Luckily, the example we're looking at in this video falls under the biggest, most common pattern there is. In Spanish, when a general noun is the subject of a sentence, we usually need to say the. There are some exceptions, like with names and probably some others, but for the most part, when a general noun is the subject, we need to say el, la, los, or las. And remember, me encantan los payasos is really los payasos me encantan. Payasos is the subject. That's why los was used here. In Spanish, when a general noun is the subject, we usually need to say the. You with me? Don't forget, until none of us are stuck in our houses anymore, you can become a lifetime member for whatever price you want. It's normally $167 to become a lifetime member, but for now, you name the price. When you're a lifetime member, you get access to all my premium courses, including Logical Spanish, my newest and most comprehensive course. With the Name Your Price special, there's really no reason for anybody to not be a lifetime member and have access to Logical Spanish and all my other premium courses. Go to SpanishJude.com slash lifetime for all the details. If you can't swing the $5 minimum, please email me and I'll set up a free account for you. I hope you like this episode of One Line at a Time. I will see you very soon for the next one. Hasta luego.